Mouse is a lot of fun to work with. So he's one of the first pigs I've had the chance to work with. I'm actually a small animal person. Um, I didn't know what to expect, but I like how vocal he is and, and how much he responds. And really, the moment you walk in the room for 8 o'clock treatments, if it's food time, he'll let you know. And then when you're in doing a physical, he'll bounce around, but if you, you know, rub him behind the ears in the right spot or rub him on the belly, he'll roll over and let you do it and, and clearly tells you what he likes, which is a lot of fun. We didn't have much history, but we discovered that he had uh, suffered two fractures to his leg, one to his femur and one to his tibia. And he had a secondary deformity on his digit, on his feet. He was significantly smaller, actually, and a little bit skinnier at the time. And at that point, we didn't have a bandage on his leg yet. He just had the, the malformed right hind leg that was kind of curled backwards and, and to the side a little bit. I'm still hopping around well on three legs, doing, doing surprisingly well for an animal his size with only three functional limbs. So his foot was bent 90 degree, his right hind foot had a tibial fracture that created marked shortening of the leg as well as some deformity. And the femoral fracture at heel surprisingly well with minimal deficit. So it really has just three functional legs and, and pigs get so heavy that mouse that would have has no chance of surviving unless we figure a way to uh, resolve this problem. Because of the complexity of the problem and some aspect of this are far more common in small animal, we consulted with Dr. Ursula Krocek and one of the elements of treatment is lengthening back the tibia to a normal length. And that leg is still eight inches too short and so we lengthened the tibia as the first step and so she actually did uh, the main part of that procedure and uh, that's the first step and that's working well. To make the tibia longer, we make a, a cut in the bone, so now they're the top part and the bottom part, and then we put pins across the top and the bottom with basically a, a twisting device that lengthened the leg. So every day, multiple times a day, we just twist a bolt that increases the distance between the two pins, and that makes the leg longer. Once we know how much length we have, then we'll decide if we need to do the same thing to the lower part of the limb, or can we add a prosthetic limb to that. It'll be sufficient. We treat them like they're our own, so we can't do too many things at once. Right, right now he's happy, he's happy to see us, he's happy to be alive, and so we're, we really don't want to do too much. So we do one step at a time. He's very social. Our technicians come in and visit with him when they have time. They'll you know, give him belly rubs, give him attention, or sneak him a treat. He definitely seems to enjoy the interaction with people. He's a really good patient. To be able to let us take these nuts on either side of his leg and twist it three, four times a day, and he let us do that, and he's happy with us, and he's really like a dog, you know, he's really, uh, and they're so smart. Pigs are as smart as dogs. And, I suspect smarter, although that's probably not a common knowledge, but pigs are very smart. Yeah.